will be back after these messages. They call him Blast. Rio Blast. He's an arm. Get him. He-Man's quick draw deputy. Figure sold separately. The fastest draw in the universe. Rio Blast. Which is the real ninja? Evil master of martial arts. Will Blast Champ get a hold of him? I have the power. Figure your soul separately. You from the masters of the universe, Ninja and Clap Champ. Evil skill against steel grip. This is our bus. This is our bus driver. And this is fun. Fruit corners, fruit roll ups. <laughs> Introducing the great big taste of new watermelon fruit roll-ups. They're too lazy full of trouble. Can't have trouble. Do you need a little giggle? Chubbles giggle at just about any change of life. Chubbles giggle till they giggle good night. It's fun to have a Chiggles around because Chiggles giggle at most any sound. Chubbles, Chubbles and Chiggles, perfect friends for you. Because when Chubbles giggles at Chiggles, Chiggles giggle too. Each sold separately from Animal Fair. This weekend on special delivery, it's night. The library is hopping and PJ is late checking out. The door. It's locked. Can you help me get out of here? Oh, of course, my dear. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't have time for this. Time. Everybody's always worried about time. What's going on? When the going gets tough, the tough start reading. Oh, I'll never get out of here. It's The Incredible Book Escape. Saturday at 3, 2 Central. A special delivery on Nickelodeon. You are watching Nickelodeon. And now back to Pinwheel. One day, Paddington decided to take up bodybuilding, and he sent away for a special outfit he saw advertised in one of Mr. Brown's newspapers. Although the advertisement hadn't said anything about bears' bodies in particular, there had been lots of letters from satisfied customers, and altogether it sounded very good value for a pound, until he came to try it out. Paddington collapsed onto his bed and consulted the brochure which had come with the outfit. The brochure was called Mind Your Muscles and it showed a day in the life of a gentleman called Grant Stalwart. If the pictures were anything to go by, Mr. Stalwart was able to do the most extraordinary things with his muscles. One picture even showed him cracking a walnut between his biceps. It was a bit difficult to tell with fur but looking at his own arm, Paddington had to admit he couldn't see any muscles large enough to dent a soft-boiled egg, let alone crack walnut shells. Paddington came to a decision. Most of Grant Stalwart's pictures showed him at work outdoors, and he felt sure that if he took his outfit into the garden, he might have better luck. Paddington wasn't quite sure what had happened. But before he had time to gather his senses, he had yet another shock. Bear! What are you doing, Bear? Look at my fence, Bear! It's ruined! I've never seen anything like it! Oh dear, Mr. Curry, I'm very sorry. If I'd known you were there, I'd have waited until you'd gone away. I, I mean... Well, Bear, what do you mean? I was only testing my bodybuilding outfit, Mr. Curry. Perhaps you'd like to have a go. It's meant for seven stone weaklings. There's a letter here from one just like you. What's that? Are you calling me a seven stone weakling? Bear! I expect if you had a go every day, Mr. Curry, you could be an eight stone weakling in no time at all. It's worth over 20 pounds and... 
20 pounds? Did you say 20 pounds? Oh, yes, Mr. Curry. And Grant Stallworth says if you're not satisfied in one week, he'll give you your money back. Uh, <clears throat> in that case, Bear, I shall write to him straight away. I'm not satisfied and I shall tell him so. All you have to do is sign a statement saying you've given them to me. I'll do the rest. I may not even report you for breaking my fence. <laughs> and if there's any change left out of the 20 pounds, I may give you sixpence for your trouble. Paddington listened disconsolately as Mr. Curry's voice droned on. He knew from past experience when he was fighting a losing battle. The mean old so-and-so, said Mr. Brown, when he heard all about Paddington's adventures later that day. It's not even his fence, it's ours. You're not letting him get away with it, are you? It would serve him right if he lost the 20 pounds and had to keep the springs. 20 pounds, said Mrs. Bird. Who said anything about 20 pounds? I'm afraid Paddington only sent a pound deposit, so there's another 19 to pay. I've got another 19 pounds to pay, exclaimed Paddington in alarm. No, dear, you haven't. Mr. Curry has. The springs are his now. The most he can get back is your pound. Well, I think Paddington ought to get his pound back right now, just to make sure. Here, here. And don't forget to read the small print next time. I shan't, Mrs. Bird, said Paddington. In fact, I shall buy a magnifying glass with my money. And if I have anything left over, I may even buy some nutcrackers. I don't think my muscles will ever be big enough to manage your Christmas walnuts. Hello, Mr. Smitty. Oh, Silas! What's news? You're just a snail I wanted to see. Oh? Can I, uh, can I interview you for the Daily Noodle? Well, I don't see a reason why not, only, um... Please don't rush me. <laughs> I wouldn't rush you. <laughs> Listen, our, uh, our newspaper readers would like to know, what do you do to keep fit? What do I do to keep fit, eh? Uh, why, that's easy. I do just what I'm doing now. Well, um, what's that, Silas? It, it looks like you're just sitting there. Sitting here? <laughs> Not at all. Look again, Mr. Smitty. <laughs> Mr. Smitty, I'm jogging. You're jogging? Sure, but at a snail's pace, naturally. I see. Right now, I'm jogging with my friend Jake. It's nice to have someone to talk to while you jog, don't you know? You're jogging with Jake? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't see him. Well... But listen, doesn't he move at a faster pace than you? How's it How going, can... Silas? Oh, Smitty, how you doing? Hi, Jake. This is my fourth time around. I'm gonna make it five today. Good luck. I've been halfway around the gate, Jake. I'm trying for once. See you next time. Hey, hey, hey do you mind if I join you fellas? Oh, not at all, Mr. Smitty. Only, um, do you think you can keep up with us? Well, I'll, I'll just set my own pace. Well, set his own pace. There goes a man after a snail's own heart. <laughs>
Take all the pails to the truck, okay? Yeah, and the basket too. And we're gonna move the tarp to another tree after we dump these back into the truck. One bushel. One. Here's one. Two. Another two. Is that two bushels? Three. Four, there was some in there before Michael dumped in. Oh, hi, Smitty. Hi, Kim. Kim, I'm doing another story for the Daily Noodle, and I would like to ask you a question. Oh, sure, Smitty, shoot. Tell me, what's your favorite thing about yourself? Mm, gee. I'd have to think about that a minute. Well, take your time. Mm -hmm. No hurry. <laughs> oh, Smitty, uh, not yet. Um, I'm going to use this apple in the salad picture that I'm making. I'm sorry. <laughs> salad picture, huh? Uh, -huh. uh, <clears throat> uh Sorry. Mm -hmm. Salad picture, too, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I think that my favorite thing about myself is the way I look at things. The way she looks at things. Uh-huh. I like to take ordinary, everyday things and, um, you know, the stuff around the house mm -hmm. and create something different with it. You mean like this salad picture? Mm-hmm. You know, this is going to be a very good story for the Daily Noodle. Kim, I think I would... I'd like to take a picture of all this. I'd better run back to the Daily Noodle office and, and get my camera. Okay. I'll be right back, Kim. Okay. Hmm. Well... Scrumptious. Hi, Coco. Oh, I think I'll take a piece here. Look at this salad, Coco. Wow. Ooh. Hi, Hi, Jack. Doc. How you doing? Oh, look at that. Looks pretty good. Just take this little piece right here. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Okay, Kim, here we go. Oh, okay. Uh, I put the salad picture over here. Oh, good. Oh, no! Oh, what happened to the beautiful salad picture? Oh, I'm sorry, Smitty. I guess everyone looks at things in different ways. Uh, you know, I thought it looked like art, but I guess everyone else thought it was just dinner. <laughs> well, come on, let's eat. If you say so. My name is Gay Lancaster. I live in the United States, San Francisco, California. My mother shops once a week in a big supermarket. She's taught me how to pick out a good head of lettuce, one that's not wilted in it, one that's not anything wrong with it. All of them are bad. They're little, huh? Is that a good one? Um... Let's see. Mommy! Mommy, this is a big one! Mommy! It's not bad. No, I like the bad. No, no, that's got sugar. Mom, this! This! Yep. You like us there, Adam? This is good. Um, guess which one doesn't have sugar? This! And what are these? No. Yeah, here. Now no. we won't ask for no more. Yeah, we won't ask for no more. Anymore, and no. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh, Never uh -uh. mind, you guys. Look. 
Cheerios is great. Cheerios! Mom likes to buy a bunch of frozen foods because they're easy to fix. Can you buy some of this? Spinach? Okay. No, not spinach. Not yeah, spinach. I'll take broccoli. Take broccoli. Mommy, I want it tonight. Okay, we'll get one broccoli, one Mom, spinach. Yeah. Some of them were Oh. Seven out on three, please. It's fun to watch the checker. I try to keep up with her, but sometimes she goes too fast for me. Okay, have a nice day now. Thanks. Bye bye. Daddy gets home from work about 4 o'clock, so sometimes he helps make dinner. It's not so easy sometimes. Well, Smitty, old friend, I've got a great idea for a story for you. You're going to love it. Well, I hope so, Ebenezer. What's your idea? Well, it's all about how I hate worms. I can just see the headlines now. Ebenezer T. Squint hates worms. And then right underneath, you can put a big picture of the world's number one worm hater, me. Well, what do you think of it? Pretty unusual stuff, huh? Yes, yes, it's unusual to say the least, Ebenezer. However, I'm afraid it is not news. Not news? No, you've hated worms all your life. Well, 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 well so? Well, so what's new about that? News has to be new, or it isn't news. Well, 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 what is it then? Old. And I don't run an old's paper. I run a newspaper. Fiddlesticks. <laughs> It's Molly the Mole. Hi, Molly. What's Hi. new? Oh, I've just finished writing a cookbook. Well, now that sounds like news. Good. Ah, tell us more, Molly. Well, I must find someone to taste all the different foods in my cookbook first. Mm. Oh, that would make a great story for the Daily Noodle. We could hold the tasting right, right here in the Daily Noodle office. Oh, I'll thanks. put it on page one of the paper. Oh. You're putting that story on page one? Hmm. But who can we find to taste the different recipes? Oh, well, now there is a point, Molly. Mm. Mm. Front page of the Daily Noodle, huh? Hmm. Who could we get to taste all that delicious food? I Look no know. further, my friends! Ebenezer T. Squint to the rescue. I will taste the different foods so that you, Smitty, can get your story. Well, thank you, Ebenezer. Think nothing of it. When do we start? Right now! I brought oh. everything with me. Smitty, give me a hand, will you? Oh, sure. Oh, hey, Sal, come, give us a hand here, will you? Oh, sure. Oh, my. 
Be careful. Oh, this table over here. here. I can hardly wait. Okay. room for you. Oh. Okay. Okay. Where's the goodies? Oh, it's all very are. fresh oh, and made from the terrific. finest ingredients. Here we are. Here's your napkin. Well, now, Ebony, I guess uh, you can start eating now. Oh, oh boy. Uh, listen now, Molly, while Ebony's is eating, I'd like to ask you just a few more questions about your book. Go ahead. <laughs> Imagine being on the front page of the Daily Noodle just for eating some delicious food. <laughs> now, what, uh, what do you call your new cookbook, Molly? Oh, I call it the complete book of worm cooking. You know, this stuff kind of smells familiar, you know? Uh, worms! This stuff is made from worms? Why, of course. There's chopped worm salad, and it's followed by worm stew very fresh, you know. And then it's followed by candied worms smothered in worm ice cream. Uh, but I hate worms. People don't eat worms. Oh, <laughs> this cookbook isn't for people. It's for moles. I am a mole, you know. Well, well, I'll do anything to get into the daily noodle. I... Uh, this stuff is awful. Blech. I take it back. I'll do anything to get into the Daily Noodle, but I won't eat worms. Well, if you don't like my cooking, I know it must be good. Mm. I wonder what got into her. these messages. <laughs> these are empty shopping carts. Nickelodeon, Toys R Us, and Captain Crunch are giving someone five minutes to fill them with toys and keep it all. And it could be you. Announcing the 1986 Toys R Us Nickelodeon Super Toy Run. Sponsored by Toys R Us and Captain Crunch. Enter and win and we'll set you free for five minutes in a Toys R Us. Five minutes to grab every toy you want and keep every toy you grab. Plus, you'll get to pick $500 worth of toys for your friends. To enter, fill out an entry blanket at any Toys R Us. Or put your name, address, age, and phone number on a postcard. And send it to Toys R Us Nickelodeon Super Toy Run. GPO Box 2726, New York. New York 10116. 25 second prize winners get a $25 Toys R Us gift certificate. 50 third prize winners get a $5 Toys R Us gift certificate, a Toys R Us magazine, and a coupon for a free box of Captain Crunch cereal. Enter and win the 1986 Super Toy Run from Captain Crunch, Toys R Us, and Nickelodeon, the place where only kids win. Nickelodeon. Does your life seem full of trouble? Here comes Chubble. Do you need a little giggle? Chubbles giggle at just about any change of life. Chubbles giggle till they giggle good night. It's fun to have a Chiggles around because Chiggles giggle at most any sound. Chubbles and Chiggles, perfect friends for you. Because when Chubbles giggles at Chiggles, Chiggles giggle too. Each sold separately from Animal Fair. The place to find a KB toy store is at your local shopping mall, where you'll find great toys, like Tommy's Monster Machine 16x16, the vehicle with 16 Monster Mesh and tires. Starved? 3.30's the time for your afternoon snack. A Turkey TV hero with turkey, ham, and a bunch of bologna. Gobble it down weekdays at 3.30 on Nickelodeon. The 
place to find a KB Toy Store is at your local shopping mall, where you'll find great toys, like Tonka Mighty Trucks, the trucks that are lots of fun and mighty tough. We're going to find KB! You are watching Nickelodeon. And now back to Pinwheel. When a snail goes a party in a party in a party and well half the fun is getting there um da 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 dum bum <sighs> what whoa wait a minute now I think I'm lost I better check the directions on my invitation to my once a year snail get together to see just where I'm going now it says right here that I should start at the daffodil well I did that already and then I'm supposed to go for 200 branches. I did that, and I counted every one, too. Then I'm supposed to circle around the mole hole. Uh, mole hole? I don't see any mole hole anywhere. I know that delicious fruity smell. I do. This nose is never wrong. Oh, I know it. There are fruit tarts nearby. There have just got to be... Oh, excuse me a minute, oh. ma'am, but could you tell me if there's a, a mole hole nearby? Oh, yes, there is. Uh, are those fruit tarts in that lovely little box? Yes, ma'am, and I baked them myself. Oh, how wonderful. You know, I just love tarts. Why, I must be the bowl you're looking for. When do we eat? Oh. <laughs> I don't mean to be unneighborly, ma'am, but I bake these tarts for my annual once-a-year snail get-together. Yep. Oh. And it took me one whole week to get these tarts into this little box. Oh. Well, maybe just one itsy-bitsy little bite. One itsy-bitsy little bite could yeah. feed 15 snails, don't you know? Oh. Well, well, I, I, I wouldn't want to ruin your party. Oh. Ma'am, are, are, are you all right? It's nothing. I, I, just, just ignore me. I'll be all right. I, oh, I'm sorry. I usually don't lose control like this, but it's just that those tarts. Remind me of my childhood. Oh, no mole could bake tarts like my mother. I... I'm all right now. Ma'am, thinking it over, it would be a great honor to me if you would accept these here tarts as a gift. Oh, oh, well, I... Wouldn't do that. Would it make you feel better? Then they're yours. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I must be going. Uh, I've only got a year to get to the snail get-together, and uh, according to these directions, uh, I'm quite lost. Oh, you're not lost. Just follow me. All right. <gasps> By the way, you must give me the recipe for those delicious fruit whoa, tarts. Whoa, whoa, not so fast, ma'am. Not so fast. <laughs>
You're hurt. You poor little thing.
try to make your ear better. Oh, poor Titty. Oh, Coco, I don't know what to do. I was holding Teddy by his ear and spinning him over my head. Why? Well, I was playing outer space and pretending Teddy was a spaceship circling around the moon. But I, uh, I guess I pulled his ear too hard. Just look, Coco. His ear's almost off. Can you fix him, Coco? Please? I can? Oh, boy. Do you hear that, Teddy? Coco can fix your ear. You have nothing to worry about now. Coco! You look just like a doctor! You must be Dr. Coco the teddy bear doctor! Oh, boy. What, what are you doing? Oh, I see. Needle and thread. You're going to sew Teddy's ear back on. Oh, boy! Does it hurt Teddy? Teddy, your ear is almost back on now. Oh, boy, my Teddy looks as good as new. Oh, thank you, Coco, thank you. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, yes, yes, Coco, I'll be careful. Thanks, Coco, you're the best teddy bear doctor in the world. You're the best teddy bear in the world. That was the goofiest, most absurd, silliest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And you know what? I liked it. This is Hattie Town, where all the people live in hats. This little boy with a great big hat on is Sancho. And this is Carrots, who is Sancho's very special friend. Today's story is called Simon's Magnifying Glass. Simon had lost his magnifying glass. He looked everywhere for it. Without it, he couldn't look for clues. And a detective who cannot look for clues cannot be a very successful detective. He was so busy looking for his magnifying glass that he didn't see Sancho fast asleep under a tree. He tumbled over Sancho's outstretched legs. Hey! cried Sancho, suddenly waking up. Look where you're going. You gave me quite a start. Uh, is that you, Sancho? said Simon, getting to his feet. Of course it's me, said Sancho. I'm big enough to see, surely. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, said Simon, moving very close to Sancho and peering at him. It's just that I've lost my magnifying glass, and without it I'm a little short-sighted. I think I'd better help you find it, said Sancho. You'll never find it if you cannot see beyond the end of your nose without it. Now, where did you leave it last? If I could remember that, I wouldn't need to look for it, now would I? Said Simon. No, I suppose not, said Sancho. Well, you look over in that direction, and I'll look this way, said Sancho. As Simon began his search, he bumped into carrots and tumbled over again. Oh, I, oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Wimple, stammered Simon. I'm so sorry, I didn't see you standing there. 
Sancho roared with laughter. <laughs> That's the first time Carrots has ever been mistaken for Mr. Wimple the Mayor, he said. And he just couldn't stop laughing. Oh, wait until the Mayor hears about this. <laughs> oh, dear me, dear me, said Simon, realizing his terrible mistake. Oh, please don't tell anyone about this, he pleaded. It would be quite dreadful if Mr. Wimple ever heard that I'd made such a mistake. Don't worry, said Sancho, still chuckling. I'll not tell anyone, but we really must find you some glasses or something. I know, he said with a sudden flash of inspiration. I'll lend you an old telescope I have. Carrots will help you in your search while I fetch my telescope. and Simon were searching, along came Bobby, and Simon explained to him that he had lost his magnifying glass. I'm very sorry to hear that, said Bobby. Now, I happen to have an old pair of glasses in my pocket. Try these on. Perhaps they'll help you to see until you find your magnifying glass. Simon tried on Bobby's old pair of glasses. Mm, it's no good, he said. I just cannot see a thing with these on. At that moment, Sancho came back with his telescope. There you are, Simon. I'm sure you'll find this will help you until we find your magnifying glass. Simon tried to control the long telescope as he set about looking for his magnifying glass once again. But alas, the end of the telescope bumped into a tree. Oh, my eye! He cried, dropping the telescope and putting his hand over his eye. Sancho calmed him down and inspected the damage. Now, there's no harm done, he said. However, perhaps it would be better if you sit down and try to think where you last had your magnifying glass. Carrots and I will continue the search. Oh, I'm tired of looking for Simon's magnifying glass, said Carrots. I'm going home to eat one of my giant carrots. What do you mean, giant carrots, said Sancho. I always buy your carrots and they're just ordinary carrots. They're 12 inches long and very fat and very juicy, said Carrots indignantly. And off he went. Sancho decided that it would be better for Simon to think for a little longer in the hope of him remembering where he had left his magnifying glass. I cannot spare any more time looking aimlessly about, he said. I shall call back later to see if you've remembered anything. he noticed Carrots with his front legs apart and his chin resting on the ground. 
this was his favorite thinking position. But Carrots was not thinking so much as looking. He was looking very hard, with a dreamy, far away look in his eyes. There, just a little way from him, was a tiny carrot lying on the ground. But, what is more important, in between him and the carrot, propped up on its rim, was Simon's magnifying glass. Sancho couldn't believe his eyes. How long have you had that? cried Sancho, pointing at the magnifying glass. Oh, I don't know, said Carrots. All I do know is that since I found it, all my carrots have grown to be 12 inches long and very fat and juicy. It's made all my dreams of big, fat, juicy carrots come true. But, 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 said Sancho, almost speechless. That is Simon's magnifying glass. You knew we were looking for it. In fact, you've been helping us to look for it. And all the time you had it propped up in front of your silly old carrots. I can't understand it. Well, it's quite simple, explained Carrots. I didn't know what a magnifying glass was, so I couldn't know that I had it, could I? Well, how silly, said Sancho. If you didn't know what a magnifying glass was, why didn't you ask? I thought you would think me silly and laugh at me for not knowing, said Carrot sheepishly. Thank you.